Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all ships at sea. Oh, no, I'm just... What is well, this? Well, we're going to measure your head. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's smaller than it used to well, be. Well, I think it is, too. And I think my chins are probably bigger than they used to be. Oh, you know, be, you I'm can get sure. them operated on, though. <laughs> oh, we have a friend yes, that actually had that done. Had That's his true. chin surgically removed, mm -hmm. and you can't tell it. Uh, but except anyway. for the big hole right. where his chin used to be. <laughs> you know, I had to get out my ruler. I have got a ruler, and I couldn't find it in my one of my drawers where I had all this kind of stuff. Were you building something, Johnson? Yeah, I wanted to see how big this pan was. I bought these. That's why I brought it in. Uh, at a go it? At a, you know, cheap sale at the grocery store, they were not going to carry this particular manufacturer anymore, and I bought them. Looks right beat two up. Of them for, well, they got mashed on the way over here. Because my recipe today is supposed to be in a nine-inch pan, but this is only eight and a half inch, so I figured, eh, what's you know, what's the difference? Let's go ahead. Oh, and do I'm it. very sorry, but uh, the uh, the uh, food police food, will, food police will be here will measuring, be shaking you down and, momentarily. And some of those people that just think you got to do everything exactly right. There are no rules in the kitchen, folks. You know, against that that beautiful wood behind you, you just look so natural. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave somebody a birthday card today and says you just look so natural. And of course, they'll probably say that when they look at you after you die. <laughs> oh, well, they always do, but uh, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, Sam always throws that pink light on you. Oh. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you went with, you look great. Uh, uh, what are we doing today? Well, I don't Come know. On, I think it's time for the witch to do a fly in. Right on cue. Right into right my on heart. Right on the old whatever. Mwah. Honey. She's gone. And she stayed gone. Do you want to read this? No, no, you go. Do you want me to read yeah. this? Dear boys, dear boys, Granny Smith has a real bad blockage in some of her guts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of her guts. So terrible. This what is people a family read. show. I forget which. Her preachers told her to try pineapple and cinnamon, which is supposed to open her up. Got any ideas? <laughs> Fondly, Mrs. Yule Prine. <laughs> Of Salem, Virginia. <laughs> well, well, as a matter of fact, let's open Granny up today. As a matter of fact, I, I'm going to be doing a, 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 a two pineapple pies. Well, good. Two for the price of one. Now that's a good cheap recipe. And I'm doing a cinnamon flop. Beg your pardon. A cinnamon flop. And the very lovely Doris, 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 Doris. Uh, a little bit later on, if we allow her to, yes. of course, if we have time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I notice she's got one of those battery-operated megaphones. Like, oh, for uh, heaven's sake. Uh -huh. and like she, that manager on WCW <laughs> that keeps beating people over the head with it. She's doing a pineapple casserole sent in by Peggy Ragland of Newport News, Virginia. They build a lot of fine ships down there. And my flop is from Florence Wood of Salem, New Jersey. Well, i got to do one quick thing, and then okay, I'll let you, you do right yours. Ahead. First of all, you make up some fresh dough. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, Mr. Johnson and I, well, this called actually for some of that... Uh, uh, frozen pie crust or what? Well, it doesn't really. It just says, you know, put it in pie crust. Well, anyway, I think uh, as Mr. Johnson would agree that this stuff is uh, falling apart. That this stuff, it'll be all it right. It cracked. Heal. <laughs> We're gonna have to. Well, it cracked because it's cold. If you buy these things, you have to let them warm up a little now bit so that they will be more malleable. Far be it for me to tell you how to do anything, but. According to the directions, they say you're supposed to put a little bit of flour on them. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't make That's, any difference well, whatsoever. I'm glad to hear you say that because I it's have found a it, bunch it's of hooey. the truth. It is it, a bunch of hooey. So anyway, you saw how I did that, put that in there, and then just poke a couple of holes so the thing doesn't swell up and explode and put someone's eye out. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying pie weights. Well, it certainly is. And put that in the oven. Now, there'll be two of them. Here's the second one, in case you missed it on the first one, an exciting replay, at least. Oh, <laughs> Wouldn't no. Wouldn't want you to miss this for the world. Wait a minute. Could Johnson and I both agree that we don't like the frozen ones. Of course, Miss Thing over here is putting her nose up at this, too, because uh -huh. she makes hers from scratch. But we both agree that the best of all worlds is to buy this that's in the uh, dairy case that's, you know, relatively fresh, if you don't want to make it from scratch, and if you don't want to use that frozen stuff, which I hate, because that stuff has a tendency to be a little too flaky. Tootsie taught me to do this. Uh -huh. She says, don't waste your time on a knife. Just do that and peel it off and throw it away, and that'll be the end of it. And once again, in case you missed the poking of the holes, 
Now, do you do anything fancy with the crust? Yeah, I put one of those right there. Now, put this in the oven <laughs> at 450 degrees. Now, let's see how he opens the oven door with a pie in his hand. Oh, at 450 degrees and bake it for nine minutes. And in a couple of minutes, check back with me on this show, and I'll show you what goes in it, because what goes in it is delicious. Johnson. All right, this flop, there is nothing to it. Uh, so watch, this is real easy. Even some little child could make this uh, for breakfast some morning when Grant, Granny was visiting. All right, a tablespoon of oil, and that's all it takes, and I'm not even going to measure it out. I have seen what a tablespoon a tablespoon. Spoon, spoon. All right. One cup of sugar. We're just going to mix a bunch of stuff together. So here is a cup of sugar. This is so much easier pre-measuring now. <laughs> I swear. It's, the truth is I can't, the, the bag of sugar and flour weighs so much I can't carry it in. So there is the... Uh, well, I hate to tell you this, but your habits are starting to uh, come home. I have pre Measured oh. sugar today. All right, that's a cup of sugar, two cups of flour. That's one, two cups of flour. That's two. a pr pretty bowl you've got Thanks, there. Thanks, it Isn't is. That lovely? Yeah. And, and what? And two teaspoons of baking powder. Mm -hmm. Let me get the one, two. Mm -hmm. and, you've uh, just built a little mountain there. It's uh -huh. real pretty. And a cup of milk. And that is somewhere, oh, it's in the refrigerator. <laughs> Let me get it, excuse me, please. He's probably, well, that's a lovely shot. He's probably pre-measured it. Well, as <laughs> luck would have it, I have. <laughs> you know, I have to be careful and about what I'm carrying because it's so heavy and I could hurt myself. Johnson, you know, it's just so tough for me to get used to you getting old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he used to be so frisky. And now you stir all this together and you're gonna put it in an eight or nine inch square pan. So that's all I have to do right now. Well, thank heavens you had the option of going eight or nine, being that this, of course, is not the proper right. uh, dimensions. Is that it? That's it. Is that all we're gonna watch you oh, do? Oh, no, I'll do some other things oh, after a while. Phew, thank heavens, I thought we were gonna have to go to another show there for a minute. <laughs> Now, what I have done is I've taken a, a, a nice size pot, at least this big, no smaller, for heaven's sake, because this makes quite a bit. It makes enough for two pie fillies. And I am currently uh, melting a half a stick of margarine in there. And I would suggest, it says dump all this together, mix it, but I disagree with that. I think you dump everything in except for the crushed pineapple and hold that back for just a couple of minutes. Now, the next thing we're going to do is separate five eggs. And we're going to put the, what do you want? Now, I you just want us to see you spray some? Yeah, I, I'm just going to spray this pan and, and dump this mixture into it. And you don't have to do this mixture a lot. Just get it moist. Now watch carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tricky thing he's doing. <laughs> spray that stuff spray on me. Spray some on your snoot. That's all. <laughs> okay, goodbye. All right. <laughs> well, that didn't last very long. <laughs> We got to separate five eggs. I know it's sad. Oh, I know, because they always scream and yell. So now you're going to put the whites on one side in a in a <laughs> mixing bowl because what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, some meringue here in a minute. We'll also do the meringue. There's one, you know, and put the yolks over in your pan on top of the stove. You know, I, we got a letter from some lady uh, I opened up and read today that took us to task Two. because. Yeah. We said that nobody made banana pudding with meringue on it anymore. Well, and we didn't mean every single person in the world. Well, three. she said that they do at her house. Well, good. Did you get her phone number? Let's bring that phone in no, here, Doris. Just Let's call her. Like I do all of those. No, <laughs> I want to call her right now. I'm irritated. Four. Was that four? <laughs> Are you keeping count? Well, you see, I had a dozen eggs, started with a dozen eggs, and took five eggs yesterday and some five eggs. So that would tell you to have two left over, and there are indeed two left over. The mathematics work out perfect on this, ladies and gentlemen. Well, good. And there goes the final egg yolk in there. Next thing you do is you pour in a whole can of evaporated, well, put some flour in there for it, doesn't matter. It, it calls for a uh, half cup of flour or five teaspoons of cornstarch. I'm, I'm emptying out a flour bag. That ought to be very close. And also an entire can of evaporated milk. This is one of those recipes, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it just says big. doesn't tell you any size. It just says a large this big depth. Two cups of sugar. 
I pre-measured it, I'm sorry. It is not that I do not have the capability of lifting big bags of sugar, it's just I didn't want to lug it around. And a uh, half a teaspoon of, well, I know what a half a teaspoon looks like, just like Johnson does, of vanilla goes in there. Now I would suggest that you mix that around first before you put your crushed pineapple in there. And you're going to turn this up fairly high. And I'm going to tell you the first problem that I had yesterday. And it's going to happen with this one because this is one of those real thin pans. See, the reason you don't want to put your pineapple in yet is because you want to make sure you mix this up real good and you get all your flour mixed up real well. Is there anything I missed? Doris is not looking the least bit nervous, therefore I must have. Now cut this up, but be very careful because I'm going to tell you what. After you get this mixed real well, then you put in your crushed pineapple, a whole can. It says big can. Put that in there also. Big old can. Big old can. Put that in there and mix that all around too. And now at this point, you, you turn it up real hot and you got to bring it to a boil for three minutes. But I'm going to tell you, you had better be attentive because this stuff will stick and scorch in a heartbeat. I'm now going to go away from the whisk and I'm going to go to one of these because I found that if I could scrape the bottom, it kept it from thickening too fast and from scorching on the bottom. And so now I've got to bring this up to a boil for three minutes. And that's all I'm going to do. And, and then, it is thickening, isn't it? Uh, it's thickening. It certainly is. And in a little bit here, we're going to do a, a meringue, and it doesn't tell you how to do the meringue at all. But fortunately, I'm a great meringue maker from way back. Tootsie taught me how to make a fine meringue from scratch, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in just a, a little bit. Except, did you bring any extra sugar with you? No, I didn't. Oh, dear. <laughs> do we have any other thing? <laughs> Oh, let me look oh, and see. Oh, I brought just a, now this is what happens when you pre-measure stuff. Uh, I pre-measured the, the part that goes in here, but I forgot to bring flour. along extra sugar for the meringue. Do you mean to tell me we don't have? Larry, wait just a minute. There you go. <laughs> I hope I don't. Well, he said he wanted some sugar. I hope I don't catch anything. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't believe this. I should have, I knew there was some. Oh, wait a minute. Here is some. Bag along. What is this? It's creamer. <laughs> <laughs> Laban is searching. Sugar. Oh, thank heavens we do have some sugar for my for my meringue. I forgot to bring the sugar for the meringue. Would you? Well, is there anything over here? Miss Doris is going to open empty. that up for me so I can get into it. Oh, <laughs> it was <there> already. <laughs> Here's a clean one. We won't have to wash that. I'm not sure. I think it was a little. It's a little old. Well, I'll get enough sugar out of there and make this meringue. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> it doesn't take an awful lot of sugar for meringue anyway. In fact, if you make too much of it, uh, it'll just go flat on you, go sad on you, or get real syrupy. What are you going to do? You're going to operate on it? See if you can get some out here. Pour it into this. If you Come over here. If you're going to be my lovely assistant, you'll have to be my lovely assistant on camera. What are you doing? Are you trying to get... I'm just trying to mash it. How long do you suppose uh, the sugar has uh, been there? Well, from the looks of it. <laughs> I'll accept anything I can get. I've got brown sugar. Would that be all right? No, you don't want brown sugar for your meringue. You'll mess it all. Oh, there we go. She's doing a great job of it now. She's doing real good. I'm proud of her. Well, the only thing I can do, Laban, I, I've just got to stand here and wait till the stuff comes to well, a boil. Well, I guess my sugar just doesn't count. You know, <laughs> well, well anyway, I need a half a cup of brown sugar, and I've got it, and I'm it's about the, it. That was about the most loving I've had uh, for <laughs> several months. Oh, me. Now, what are you doing? I'm trying to get half a well, cup. Well, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody is poking around in a container trying <laughs> well, to get mine, sugar out of it. Well, mine is okay. It's a fresh box. Oh. All right. Now, once you get this sugar, you sprinkle a half a cup of sugar <laughs> over the top of the batter here. Well, how delicately done. How well. wondrous it is. I have to check my pie crusts. Well, they're looking right. Hardy. Like, looking like they're getting where they're supposed to be. Well, anyway, so here I go. What was that? Oh, <laughs> that is nine. that the telephone? Oh, is that it? All right, nine minutes is up, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta take the pie crusts out.
Now look at those. Tell me Doris couldn't do any better from scratch. That is just simply lovely. You would never know except for the folds where it came apart. <laughs> <laughs> it shrunk up and uh, came apart at the seams. See, you're though. supposed to, to. I know what I'm supposed with, to do. What are you supposed to do? I was much more delicate that. at home. I did it right. I promise you <laughs> I did. I took a little more time with it, but that's all right. It'll do for the likes of this recipe. It'll do okay. Oh, baby. Now, I don't know if I like this attitude. It's good <laughs> enough for us. <laughs> but anyway, well, while I'm waiting for this to thicken, and it's taken its good old, <laughs> and, and it and is, we are it's, thick it, it is trying. It is trying very hard scorch on the bottom. This will get very thick very fast. And so while we're doing that, I'm going to make up if that's enough, Doris. You have diddled around enough. I'm going to make up some uh, meringue. Mm -hmm. You take your egg whites and let them set just a little bit. It doesn't hurt for them to get to be room temperature, but you got to be careful in this day and age because you don't want to kill anybody, any of your friends with all the horrible things that you can get from food that sits around too long. And start frothing those things up. I want you to see this, ladies and gentlemen. This is a first on cooking cheap. I am doing two things simultaneously. <laughs> but can you chew gum while you're doing it? <laughs> if I had gum, <laughs> you know Hammerstrom always has gum. All right, now here's what now, you got to do. Add a little you bit put of pearl onions in this. No, 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 that's so. Uh, what is that? Pineapple. Pi oh, that's, I thought he had curdled this stuff, <laughs> but it's just pineapple. Just a little Plain bit of Plain old a, pineapple. A little bit of Out the can. Right? Vanilla extract goes in there, and as you're doing this, be very careful because you don't want to kill it, you'll add a little bit of sugar. And you don't need to add a lot of sugar, just a little sugar. Johnson's sugar a while ago was just too much for this recipe. A little sugar goes a long way. That's not. I wouldn't do any more until it's mm -hmm, sweet to the, to the touch. There you go, and until the forums peaks. Isn't that beautiful, ladies and gentlemen? I did it right before your eyes every time. Great recipe, Tootsie taught me how to do that years ago. You either got it or you don't. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to thicken this stuff. You gotta bring it to a boil for three minutes and it's getting there. But watch this, see? On the bottom, if you're not careful, I wonder if this shouldn't have had a double boiler, but then it would take forever to get something to boil on a well, double boiler, wouldn't it? does it have to reach boiling? It says. Well, then you don't want a double boiler. Well, no, you don't. It says, boil them for three minutes. So I guess you get, but you gotta be real careful because look how thick, see that thick stuff mm -hmm. on the bottom? It's got an awful lot of uh, thickness. Uh, thickness. <laughs> <laughs> once boys, in a, once the in a while, voice of God. the camera people help us out when words fail us. What can I tell you? Well, I'm going to set tell you, this I'm just, aside. I'm sick of hearing know, about it. <laughs> put that in there because we don't want nothing bad to happen to it. And, uh, you know, if I could leave it alone, it would boil faster, but I'm afraid to leave it alone. This, this thing will scorch on the bottom. I just know it will. Well, while I'm waiting to do this, let's, can we bring in... Uh, yeah, oh, let's go over recipes. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let me do go mine ahead. while you're doing it. Here's a cinnamon flop recipe from Florence in Salem, New Jersey. A tablespoon of oil, one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, two cups of flour, one cup of milk, and the topping that I'm working on now calls for a half a cup of brown sugar, four tablespoons of butter or margarine, and I'll show you that in just a minute, and some a teaspoon of cinnamon. And you bake it for about 30 minutes or 35 minutes at 350 degrees. And let me just show everybody right now what I'm doing. I've got some cinnamon. It calls for a teaspoon, but I think you can just kind of sprinkle it really good on the top and this is all there is to mine. Well that's real pretty. Uh-huh. Miss Doris come in here. The very lovely Doris ladies and gentlemen who is standing by in the background and has been so helpful to me today. Oh, she, I don't know what I'm going to put this in the oven you. so Doris has got room to operate on. Okay. I had to make a pint. <laughs> I thought she had forgotten she was here for a minute. No, a pineapple casserole. And it called for one 20 ounce can of undrained crushed pineapple, two tablespoons of flour, a half a cup of white sugar, about one cup of grated cheddar cheese. And then uh, you crush Ritz crackers. I did one of the uh, little 
bags they have inside it. You know, they come in three, I think it is. And I melted a half, uh, uh, one stick of butter to mix with the uh, Ritz crackers and put it on top. And then you bake it for 20 minutes at 350. And I don't know how you're supposed to get it out. It's called a casserole. And I try with the thing, but I don't believe you can get it out as a pie. I think you would have to spoon it. It doesn't you look probably like could get it out or something, but I think and put it in little bowls and, and put some and cream on. Yeah, and I thought about with ice cream or cream or something like that, that um, it would just be like a cobbler type thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And well, the, it said 20 minutes. And see, the cheese didn't melt or do anything in there. I wonder if you shouldn't do it a little longer. Hmm. I would think so. And uh, I looked it up, I saw it in another recipe book, and it said 305 degree oven for two minutes, and I knew that one had to be a misprint, so that didn't help any. Well, that's so real I nice. Now, my recipe. And I, think, <laughs> and I think Larry's here is one of those, it doesn't say, but I think it's one of these constant stirring until boiling things. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I had to do yesterday. Well, I gotta give my recipe or I'm never gonna get it in. <laughs> Sent in by Denise Rhodes of Sutherland, Virginia. Five egg yolks. Save the whites for your meringue. Two cups of sugar, a large can of crushed pineapple, a half stick of margarine, half stick a cup of flour, or five teaspoons of cornstarch, a large can of evaporated milk, and a half teaspoon of vanilla. Now, this has gotten real thick. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to go on ahead and do it. What you do, once it thickens up, is, and it should be thicker than that, but that's okay. We'll go with it. Pour, this makes two complete pies. Because you know blood is thicker than pie filling. And then what you do on top of that is once I, what I would suggest you do because it's very hot, put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for a couple yeah. of hours. Once it's set up, then you put your meringue on top of it, real pretty, and uh, do what you do with meringue, which is put it under your broiler to brown it, and voila. Lovely. And that's what it looks like. It looks like maybe it was a little hotter on this side than this side, but I find I've been a little or more Or if you've got a little butane torch, you can go Just over the top of it. Whatever. But anyway, that's the way it works. That's the way it is. And there you go. And well, that's real a good. Well, fabulous recipe. I wouldn't uh, leave it over there. I want a spoonful. Well, I have oh, another one oh, over you there. Got, See, oh. it makes two pies. Oh, that's right. How nice. So that's doubly oh, special. Good. Well, they'll get hefty around here eating all of these pies <laughs> if they don't wind up in somebody's that's right. space. That's right. Right. So anyway. You know, we haven't thrown a pie in anybody's face for years. It has been a while, hasn't it? But fortunately, they're in glass Well, things. let's give this a try. All right, let's go do it. <laughs> so much furniture, so oh, little time. <laughs> well, let me get you a piece of this fine uh -huh. pie. Well, it is set up real, real nice. You know, it would be nice if we had proper utensils over here. Well, I wish you would look. Oh, I know it broke. Look. You'll have to <laughs> well, I can't get this out with this. No. Mine has set up so well that it actually formed properly, and even though I did not have the proper tools, it came out properly. Now, that's a good pie, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a piece of flop for you. Well, this is a pretty pie, as you can see, and if I had a decent thing to get it out with. Here, have some of this. Well, we're certainly going to have our share of pineapple. I yes, think you only need one, Johnson. Nah, thanks. Sure. Yeah, we'll see if it's any good. Well, let me try yours. Do you All eat right. it with your fingers or with a fork? That beats me. Mm, it's nice and like crunchy. like a coffee cake, maybe. Well, let me try it yours. It's wonderful. Here. I like that. Mmm. How is that stuff? It tastes exactly like pineapple. <laughs> which which did you try? Doris's? Mm-hmm. Let me try it. It tastes exactly like pineapple. I don't think it baked long enough, and I think you're supposed to serve it hot. Does it say serve cold? It doesn't say, and I feel like That Doris too. never pays attention to recipes. It doesn't say. <laughs> What do you think of the pie? The pie is delicious. That it's pie is real fabulous. Good. Real good. And very nice to make. And, and let me try my cinnamon would be especially food. good for summer because it's so fruity and, well, mm. chilly. Mmm. Good, good job. Mm, mm, mm. And I think yours is too, Johnson. I like this little recipe that That's you put together. That's kind of a coffee cake, and mm -hmm. it's wonderful. A little crunchy on the edges. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, yeah. 
We think that if Doris had paid a little more attention to hers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, and if her stove worked right. Bye.